So just how practical is it to train with traditional martial arts weapons in today's world? This episode actually comes to us from a question asked by one of our Patreon members, and we thought that it would be a great idea for today's discussion. So, is it worth learning traditional martial arts weapons? Stick with us and find out. So today's question comes from Renee Martinez. Renee asks, in this modern era, is it still useful to train in traditional weapons like the bow, stick, tonfas, etc.? I actually like this question a lot because when it comes to the martial arts, traditional weapons just have this allure to them. I mean, first of all, they're a very enjoyable challenge to try to even train and to learn how to use them. I mean, anyone who's picked up nunchucks or a sword or whatever knows that you don't pick it up in five minutes. It's a really fun challenge and it's an accomplishment when you get good with it. Additionally, they're, they add an exotic flavor to the martial arts, especially when you talk about media growing up in the 80s and 90s. You had the Ninja Turtles, you had all sorts of different movies and Kung Fu films. When we saw these weapons on TV, they were exotic, they were exciting, they were cool, and what kid didn't want to learn how to use them? And also, when you see someone who's really, really good with them, they can be incredibly impressive to watch. I mean, there's tournaments just based on the nunchuck performances and other weapon performances, and just, just from a visual point of view, they're really cool. But also when it boils down to it, when you find somebody who's really proficient with the use of that tool, it can actually be quite devastating and effective in their hands. Now for most of those reasons, especially for fun and hobby and competition and character building and all that and achievement, they're absolutely fantastic for that purpose. But in the context of talking about are they practical, it usually comes down to self-defense. So that's kind of what we're going to focus on today. So when we say traditional tools, what exactly are we talking about? What are we included in that category? Think back to like, you know, Okinawan Karate, Kung Fu, Kobudo weapons. So basically things like swords, bow staffs, spears, Kali sticks, Tonfa, nunchucks, Sai, Kama, even throwing tools such as shurikens, and there's more exotic tools like the hook swords and different types of spears. Honestly, the list is endless and can go on and on and on, but we're going to just cover some of the main common ones that you see the most often. And the reason we, we, this is such a cool topic because these tools are ingrained in the martial arts lore and they're iconic, and like I said, they're an exotic flavor, but just how practical is it to still train with them today? Would those skills ever become useful in today's world? So the first thing we have to ask is, just how likely are you to come in contact with these items in the real world? Or even more so, how likely are you to be carrying them on you? I mean, it's not like martial arts schools get stormed very often where you happen to have them in your hand, you're training with them, so there's that. And also, in many cases, some of them aren't even legal to carry around. I mean, what's your plan? Are you going to walk around with a staff like Morgan from The Walking Dead? Or keep a pair of sai in your belt? Or nunchucks in your back pants? Or a sword on your hip? I mean, e even Kali sticks, unless you're like Jeff Speakman in The Perfect Weapon where he had them in the sheath on his back, how practical are you going to be walking around with these items? And the second thing you have to ask is, how effective would these tools be in today's world? I mean, there's a, to be honest, there's a lot of modern tools out there right now, both long and short range, that can easily equalize most of the tools on this list. And they're easier to conceal, and in most cases, faster to learn. So then what are they good for? Why would you train? Well, first of all, just training with them as a training tool, they're pretty good for that. I mean, you're gonna learn all sorts of coordination, timing, learning how to use items as an extension of your body, spatial awareness, all that becomes ingrained into you in part of your training. It creates a higher awareness for you just in general. So are they actually worth learning? In the literal sense, you're not likely to ever use or encounter these in the real world. But if you put in the time, and it does take a lot of time, and you become proficient at them, then yes, they can be effective in certain scenarios. But even more so, there's a lot of skill sets that you can take from this training and actually apply to real world applications. So let's start with the bow staff. A lot of martial arts systems implement the bow staff in their training. Now, it looks really cool, it's fun to train with, but an item such as this, if you become good at the skills that it teaches, you can apply this to a lot of real world items. So if you're in a self-defense situation, there's not to say that you can't grab a broom or a mop or a long stick or even pipes. You know, it teaches great coordination and also the bow staff is really, really, really good at teaching spatial awareness around you. Because if anyone of you out there have ever tried to train with the bow staff, how many times have you nicked the ceiling or clipped the wall or had to watch out for the, your, your, your uh, partners next to you or nick the floor or even hit yourself with the stick. So it teaches a lot of spatial awareness and control that I think those skills can absolutely apply in a real life defense situation. So then we have the sword. So many different varieties of swords, many different arts use them. It's a very versatile weapon. It's a very specialized, highly skilled weapon. Um, but it's really good for, you know, again, that mindset of treating the object as an extension of your own body. It's not just something you hold, it's something that becomes a part of you as you use it. And it's really good for 
quick strikes, you know, looking for small openings where you can get some jabs in there, targeting windows. You're, 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 not, you're not likely to get in any sword fights in the real world, but then again, there's a lot of similar items in terms of similar length and, and weight that you could use to apply these skills from, such as, you know, a branch or a, a, a pipe, or even in some cases, a cane or an umbrella. You know, certain parrying techniques, certain striking techniques, they may become useful, and that's some of the skills that by training with the sword, you might be able to apply to a real world situation. And then we come to Kali or Eskrima. And in my personal opinion, I do believe that this is probably one of the most practical tools that you can learn in the martial arts studio. And we're not doing this list in any particular order, but I do kind of favor these in a bit because one, um, a lot of different arts, a wide array of arts will implement these in their training. Two, I do believe they complement a lot of different training. And the benefits that you learn from it, it's once again, an extension of your body. They're extremely lightweight, they're easy to wield. They've got a high striking velocity. They're extremely versatile, they're strong, and you can be really fast at practicing them. And um, if you have not yet, those of you who train with the Kali sticks just know how valuable they are to train with. Those who have not, I do recommend them. There's a lot of valuable education you can get from this training tool. And who can forget about nunchucks? Nunchucks. Well, is there any more of a stereotypical tool, and especially in popular media when it comes to the martial arts? Nunchucks, as far as a training tool goes, I believe are really, really good for learning hand-eye coordination. It takes a lot of skill, and a lot of practice and time and dedication to become good with these, but when someone does, it's incredibly impressive. And honestly, let's not lie, they're really fun to train with. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I could easily spend a few hours just isolating, just practicing and just trying to do different techniques. They're, they're, it's kind of a bit of addictive to work with. As far as a practical self-defense tool in the literal sense, just by walking around with a pair of these, I don't think they're as practical, but some of the skills could apply to other weapons, especially flexible objects such as chains, ropes, or even towels to turn off light switches. And also to be honest, I do believe the nunchucks are really good for teaching the concept of rebounding. I mean, how many times you see in movies where, you know, a person on screen has a pair of nunchucks and they're swinging around in a circle and they're just knocking people out with it. The truth of the matter is, if you hit an object with this while this is in flight, it's gonna bounce and rebound. You're not gonna keep the same trajectory. So a, a, a tool like this is really good at teaching rebounding skills and how to regain control of your object. So as far as that is a training aspect, I think it's a very valuable skill you could learn. And for those of you who've spent any amount of time training with these, knows the risk. And we all remember our very first unfortunate accident with hitting a certain body part, which comes natural to an object that's attached by a chain where you swing around the room wildly. And to some unfortunate individuals, myself included, that's often captured on video. But that's another story altogether, and that's also an exclusive for our Patreon members, so go be sure to go check that out. But also very important to know that in many states, in many cities, in many countries, these are illegal. So please check, of course, with your, your local laws before you go walking around with these. I don't recommend doing that. So always, always follow the rules and know what you can and cannot do. So then we have the Psy, and I'm also gonna include the Tom Fun to this category, and I'm grouping them together because they're very similar in historical use. Both of them were used by local law enforcement or guards, and primarily for one-on-one -on -one combat or even crowd control. And the Psy, it, it's not particularly sharp. Sometimes you will have sharper tips, but for the most part, it's a blunt striking object and they're extremely versatile, but they're short range. And they're often used in the pair, mainly because while one is deflecting or blocking or striking, the other one is back and prepared, ready to go. So you kind of trade off with it. Now the Psy might seem like one of the least likely objects on this list to be practical in real life. But to be honest, I, I believe it can teach more than it gets credit for. Primarily because it is a striking tool and due to that nature, it's used in many applications similar to a baton. And it also follows a lot of the same striking angles as a Kali stick would. And also, I do believe that this is an excellent tool for teaching you how to reposition an object in your hand. Because you don't just hold it one way. There's different ways to position it. You can hold it long ways, short ways. There's different striking surfaces with it. Um, they can get you know, pretty nasty sometimes in the way they can be utilized. They're also good for guarding. So I do believe in terms of a training tool and learning dexterity and how to manipulate an object in your hand, these are one of my personal favorites. And even though I'm not very good at them, th these are one of my favorites to train with. So as far as a practical weapon goes, you're not really gonna be walking around with this every day. We're not Raphael. We're not gonna have a pair of these stuck into our belt as we strut down the street. At least I sincerely hope you're not. But I do believe there's a lot of valuable lessons that can be learned from this. Um, it's very similar in use and technique in some areas to the Tomfa, and where the Psy and Tomfa were used for, you know, crowd control and law enforcement, we still see the Tomfa used today in the police baton. So then of course we have shurikens or throwing stars or other throwing weapons. 
Now, I do not advocate, you know, the practicality of walking around with a bunch of ninja stars with you or shurikens to throw, but I do believe that training with them in a safe dojo setting could really, really help with hand-eye accuracy and just learning how to be more accurate in general. You know, walking onto a target, getting control of your body and coordination. So as far as a training sense, I believe it's fantastic for that. But in a real life application, you never know. You know, you might have to throw something, whether to distract or in self-defense. That hand-eye accuracy never hurts to have. And to be honest, this list can go on and on and on. There's a lot of other exotic tools and there's many other such as, you know, spears and the hook swords that really aren't practical to carry around these days. But maybe if you took the time to learn them, I'd be curious to know what kind of lessons could you pull from that? So if you have any experience with those weapons, look around your everyday objects, look for analogs, look for ideas that you can carry over from your set of training that can carry over to real day practical objects. So when it comes to today's modern self-defense, there are a lot of obvious options, but not everybody's comfortable in carrying those. And that's fine because honestly, there's a lot of options out there, such as small wearable things that you can have on your keychain. There's, you know, a whole assortment of different self-defense tools that are small enough and portable to carry with you that could actually come to your aid if you actually have to use them. And even, there's even some exotic ones in that sense. Like we did a review on this a while back. It's a stun gun knife. And I love to use this for training purposes, but um, it's pretty cool. It's electric and we did a review on that. So uh, I do recommend checking that out. You can see it on our channel. But when it comes to traditional weapons, I think sometimes it's worth pausing, going back, looking how they were used historically. And then when they're in your dojo setting, what can you train with? If your interest is in self-defense, what kind of concepts and ideas can you learn from these tools to bring them over to real day application and to use in your environment around you? I always think that's a great experiment and a good thought process and exercise to do. So thank you so much, Renee, for your question. It's an excellent topic to talk about, something that I don't think is often looked at as much as it should be. Now, next week, we're gonna cover a different but related question from another viewer. So be sure to subscribe and click on the bell icon so you can be notified when that drops. And if you have any questions you'd like us to answer on the show, join us on Patreon. We do take user submitted questions and we will address them on the show. And if you like this episode and you wanna learn more about traditional weapons, then check out this episode we did a while back on the five coolest swords. Traditional, exotic, and really cool. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next week.